So, hi guys, I am Cap and this is Jordan and welcome to Epic Log, a show where we bring you the latest in the world of science. Our first topic today is HDMI 2.0, which has recently been announced. Uh, it brings 60 frames per second at 4K resolution with 18 gigabits per second bandwidth and 32 channel audio. So, Cap, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, first of all, I hate HDMI. Put it, that, that's a, I have a personal vendetta against HDMI. I think the connectors are really stupid because they don't have any sort of locking mechanism and they break very easily. They're, they're just not a very robust um, connector that we have to transport video and um, audio um, information, right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm really excited to see is the fact that it supports 4K at 60 frames per second. Why? Because the previous generation, which was uh, HDMI 1.4, it boasted 4K capabilities, but only at 30 frames per second, which is alright for movies. But however, if you're wanting to do gaming, 30 frames per second is very bare bones, and you want something a lot higher than that, something along the lines of 60 frames per second. And even if we're talking 3D gaming, you want 120 frames per second. But of course, this is very long in the future, and um, yeah, but I'm, I'm happy to see this, and... Uh, I hope that they keep uh, updating this technology. I really hope they put a lock-in mechanism, but yeah. So our next topic, we're talking about the uh, Samsung is actually um, the creator of this. And uh, they came out with DDR4 finally. Um, it's not, it's not uh, at a consumer level yet. However, they have gotten it to servers. And um, what's that going to do is eventually, because the way technology works, it always starts off at the very top, you know, at the, at the very high level, and then it gets sort of ported down. And um, what we're going to see here, this is, this, is where it gets, is, this is where it gets interesting, because um, uh, c CPUs nowadays that have integrated GPUs on them, um, AMDs call them APUs, or Accelerated Processing Units, they actually share memory with the CPU. And so... DDR4 is bringing out a lot higher uh, memory bandwidth and this is going to completely change gaming performance at a um, at an APU level, at a at an integrated GPU level and this I, I cannot wait till it comes out because I'm still stuck on DDR2 believe it or not but um, DDR3 has been going well and I really cannot wait till DDR4 uh, Do you have anything to add? Not in particular. Alright, well, <laughs> <laughs> next topic's your one. Go for it, mate. Alright, um, so apparently there's a new 2 inch QPC for $45 actually called the QBox I. Now, what I found interesting about this is uh, I personally own a Raspberry Pi. I don't know if you've seen this. Here's a model on the screen if you're interested in looking at it. But uh, for me, buying it was around. I think it was $90 to get the case and the box and everything. Uh, the thing I'm excited about for this is that it's got the option to go up to 2 gigabyte of RAM. Uh, it's only got a uh, 1 gigahertz processor, but you also have the option to upgrade it to a quad core. For um, an extra price of about, you know, $80 or so. The thing I would most likely use this for is a home theatre PC, if you could have it yes, sitting in your lounge room, just connected to whatever network you're running. I mean, this is this is like the, you know, absolute miniaturization of, you know, even the Apple TV, if you will, because if you about. have, if you have, say, a Netflix account, this has, the, the $45 version has Wi-Fi capabilities, and uh, the $120 version actually has a hardwired Ethernet port, and so... If you have a Netflix account, or say have a NAS, if you download your movies legally, then you um, you know this supports 1080p films, so you can actually um, you know uh, stream straight from Netflix and then port it straight to your TV, and you know in a tiny two-inch two-inch little cube, you know. And this is where technology is heading nowadays, miniaturizing what we've always known to be big boxes, you know. And yeah, it's, it's, it's great, mate. It's great. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the, actually, the thing I found interesting about this is that you have the option to run Android or Linux. Uh, personally, I haven't used Android. I'm more of a 
Apple type of guy. Yeah, because the Raspberry Pi runs Linux, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, does. It's right. got a few options. You can run Fedora or um, Raspberry OS, which is some form of Debian. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see what the Android OS would be like because I've never experienced it on a phone personally. Um, but I'm interested to see what it is PC wise. All right, that's interesting. Our next topic is um, quantum computing. Right, so, okay, if, if you guys haven't heard of Moore's Law, basically it's it's a law made by a guy, obviously with the last name of Moore, and uh, he said that every couple of years, the um, the, the speed or, or the transistor count of CPUs doubles, right? And so if you look at the, the, the amount of transistors we have on our dies, it's, it's an exponential graph and it goes up exponentially. And what happens is, as you keep shrinking these transistors, you can't fit as many. And so we need some form of new technology, hint, hint, quanti quantum computing, to, to solve this. And um, there's a couple of researchers here that claim that they've actually uh, done this with what's called quantum tunneling. Now, I don't want to go into the physics of all this, but basically, if you bring two objects close enough together, they don't have to actually touch, but if they're close enough, they electrons will actually start to jump over that gap. And it's an instantaneous thing. There is no sort of lag or anything. It's instantaneous, and that is going to bring our, um, our clock speeds, first of all, way up. It's going to shrink the die, which means we're going to have you know very low-power devices. I mean, ca can you imagine right quantum computing in a phone? Just... Think about it. Think about the capabilities of that. I mean, well, what do you think about this? Uh, I think it's a little out of my league from science point of view. I'm not too much of a hardware person, so I don't understand a lot of the, the physics. And when you said about the uh, transistors getting smaller and smaller, is is there a point where they can no longer get smaller? Absolutely, absolutely, and especially because that's why that's why you see when people overclock their CPU, say with liquid nitrogen. It is possible to overclock them because um, the the vibrations that the individual molecules have they slow down and become more stable. However, if you keep shrinking this transistor, the vibrations will overcome the actual molecule itself, and so you cannot have a stable CPU. And that's why quantum computing is really going to bring its you know bring bring the reins here. And I hope. Moore's Law just keeps shooting up, and uh, yeah. When do you think that something like this would be available to the public? Definitely not anytime soon. This is still in research. I expect 10 to 20 years from now, it will be at a consumer grade, but definitely not anytime soon. It's still in very much uh, research stages nowadays. Right, fair enough. Uh, next, we'll be looking at the new Mini Plus, which is HTC's version, I guess, of a Hipster phone for people who don't want phones. The ultimate hipster phone. <laughs> so basically, um, what they're doing is they're going back to the old days where there's no touch screen, uh, there's no fancy stuff, basically, that all the modern phones have. It's just a simple phone with a small screen and a dial pad. Um, I find this pretty interesting because technology, it's been weird with phones lately. For ages, it was about getting down smaller, 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 so whoever had the small, smallest phone, you know. But now it's getting back to bigger, you know, uh, with the Galaxy Note, which is a tablet with phone capabilities. Come on, yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if basically, if you can't fit a phone in your pocket, it's, it's not, a not a phone. It's not a phone. Get over it. You might as well carry a laptop. Like, <laughs> um, but I find this interesting because I think definitely all the hipsters are going to be walking around going, you know, look at my my phone, it makes phone calls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, like, where, where I see this shining is um, phones for children. Because um, ch children, if, if you give them a smartphone, they, you, you're sort of putting them into a situation where, where it demands responsibility from them before they're ready to accept it. So they could be abusing, you know, the internet, they could be abusing... Each other. Yeah, exactly. Especially with like um, all, all the yeah, all Social the um, 
well, it's called cyberbullying, all the cyberbullying on Facebook and whatnot, and that's not something you want to be exposing children to at such a young age. However, you definitely want to know where your children are and what they're doing. And to, to facilitate for that, obviously you need a bare bones phone, which um, can text and can call. And if this phone fits that market, then go for it. I have no problem with it. Yeah. Something interesting uh, about this phone actually is that it can be used as a TV remote, which is honestly what the design looks like. It looks like a TV remote with a screen on it. Uh, but it's got a <laughs> IR. <laughs> it's got an IR chip in it that allows you to use it as that. And the fact that it's only eighty dollars definitely reinforces the fact that it probably is for a younger generation. You know? mm. Next topic we have up is uh, Samsung's smartwatch, which they're calling the uh, Galaxy Gear. Yes. Now, it's, it's definitely not the first smart, smartwatch, but it might be the best implementation that we have seen so far. It's got a 1.63 inch touchscreen, so it's not much bigger than this G-Shock yes, over here. And uh, it's got a 1.9 megapixel camera. And so you can take video and photos with this. And um, what I find interesting about it was that it's actually got an inbuilt microphone and speaker uh, built in so that you can actually uh, receive phone calls on and basically talk like this. You know, speak of hipster, right? <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's not uh, intended to be a standalone device. It's made to pair up with a uh, Samsung smartphone. And basically, you can run apps off the phone, but it sort of needs to be running, you know, the, the, the host in the background. Honestly, that, that's pretty stupid. If Basically, if you want to buy a watch, they're saying you have to buy a phone. If you don't yeah, already, that's if you don't I mean, already like, own an Android product, then... Marketing schemes. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, I guess what I'm interested to see is how other companies like Apple like reacts to this because obviously there's been rumors of an Apple Watch, something like that. You know, even though it's only a concept sketch, I could see Apple doing something along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. Which definitely I think would be interesting and add a bit more competition to and the smartwatch. Apple, with the way they do things, if they did a smartphone, trust me, it'd be a damn good. Sorry, if they did a smartwatch, yeah. it'd be a damn good smartwatch, it and would. it would definitely be a standalone device. One thing, one thing I want to mention is the battery life may only be about 25 hours, depending on how much you use it. Now, I hate coming home and having to plug in my phone, and if I had to take my watch off every day and plug in a cord to it, I would kill myself. However, however, first where... <laughs> hashtag first world problems, right? <laughs> where, where I could see technology coming in to help us here is inductive charging, right? You've, you've, you've all probably heard of this. It's just where you have a coil of wire on a base and a coil of wire in your phone and they interact inductively or electromagnetically and it, it charges your phone basically without the use of cables. And if I can take off my watch, throw it on my desk and have it charge ready for the next morning when I go out again, I, I would absolutely buy this. This is a product that I would consider as long as it doesn't have that down, um, that does have that flaw of the battery life. One thing I'm concerned about is uh, how how does this? If obviously there are apps that the watch uses, obviously some of them are going to need an internet connection. So does the watch actually hotspot off of your mobile? And if so, like, what does that mean for data usage? Is that extra cost just to read the time, or you know, how does that work? <laughs> All right. Well, um, we'll we'll obviously put all the links in the uh, the description down at the bottom if you want to check these out yourselves. But other than that, do you have anything to add? No, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, thank you for watching our debut of the epic log. Name chosen by Jordan. Yeah, it took us a while. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you have any questions or you have any feedback on this type of thing, let us know because we're. Kind Down of trialing to see if we have any, uh, if this is something people want to see, I guess. Yeah, but um, thank you for watching and uh, we will see you next time. Epic log, that Epic makes log. sense. Epic log. Hi, I'm Cap, this is Jordan, welcome to the Epic log. <laughs>
<laughs> epic log. What the? F <laughs> <laughs> what epilog means talk? The e yeah, and epic log means. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to epic log. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Apple. We have Apple. Um. <laughs> 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 <laughs>